Hey there, and welcome back. In this video, we'll be creating the clamping functionality for our camera so that now that we have our rotation and everything in, it means it will stop us from being able to rotate over certain bounds and past certain points on the axes that we don't want it to move. So to do this, we're just going to go into our blueprints class, the camera pawn as we've done previously, and this is actually going to be run on the event tick, but it's going to be a fairly small, lightweight set of functionality and checks going on, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now, of course, you could add this to something like a timer, but unless you're making the timer interval really small anyway, it's going to feel a little bit laggy sometimes and a little bit choppy, and that's why I've just chosen to do this on the event tick. So if we create the event tick custom events as we've removed that previously, and what we're going to do is to begin, we want to do a branch check, and we're going to check against different variables uh, and values that we have access to and then drive our logic based on what is returned here. So we want to account for two things here. This is going to be the minimum and the maximum that we want the camera to be moving on the y-axis. So first of all we're going to pull up and get an or boolean and what we want to find out is whether or not the rotation of the camera is past a certain boundary. So we're going to do a get actor rotation call. So we'll get the rotation, the current rotation of the camera actor. Again, you can choose to either pull off of this and say break rotator. So you get something like this. Or if you wanted less nodes lying around, I'm just going to choose to split this and we can pull the variables out from here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is off of the Y, so the pitch, I want to find out whether this is less than a another float and I also want to like I said do a maximum check as well so we're also going to check whether it's more than a certain float. Uh, the reason I've done it this way is like you've seen previously now what we can do is we can pull off of this for the less than check we can pull off and promote this to a variable. This is going to give us a new float and I'm just going to call this the y limit min. Okay so this will be our minimum limit for the camera and then we're going to do the same thing we'll pull off of the more than check promote this to a variable as well and we'll call this the y limit max and I'll just change that to actually say min and not mit. Okay so we now have our minimum and maximum check. Now with this uh, of course we just want to hit compile and so that we don't forget to do this later. I'm just going to set this to be a range of minus 80 for the minimum limit and a value of minus 10 for the maximum and of course you can play about with this if you wanted to have a more or less restrictive clamping going on uh, but this will be perfectly fine for testing and then off of the less than check I'm just going to pull off of here and create an or boolean check and then we can plug in the more than check into the second parameter uh, and in fact we already have one there that I forgot we made so I'm just going to remove that and plug that into the branch check that we've created. Okay so off of the check which is uh, comparing against the y limit to min I'm going to pull off of the the boolean return again and I, I want to find something called a select float and this is just based on a or b so whether it's true or false it will pick one value or the other so we're going to plug the minimum value into a and the max value into b so that will return a float for us based on whether this is less than our minimum limit and we're getting there now there's just one more step so off of here uh, we want to set the actor rotation so whilst we're doing this check this is where we want to update the rotation so again i'm just going to split the structure pin so we don't have any extra nodes i'm going to pull in the return value so whether this is chosen either the minimum or the maximum to clamp this to we're going to plug that in to our pitch value here so we have our pitch ready the z value we want to keep the same so we're just going to take out whatever the z value of the rotation currently is and we can just plug that straight into our yule up here. And then the x rotation or the uh, the roll value isn't being changed at any point anyway. So that can stay as zero. But again, you can pull that in if you wanted. Now, the only way that we can really tidy this up is I'm just going to add a few reroute nodes by double clicking on the wires here. And just try and kind of house everything, the logic inside of the reroute nodes so that there's not too many cables kind of uh, overlapping with each other but sometimes it's just not much you can do and then with that done I'm just going to move these down select all of the nodes and uh, control select to remove the event tick right click on these and we're going to collapse this into a function again and this is just going to be our camera limits function okay so we now have our camera limits function this is going to be getting run constantly on the event tick so we're always going to have the camera clamps enabled and it will be maintaining the camera within certain points so if we press play now select our object we can just see that as I'm trying to move down past the floor, we have our limits on what we can do on the upward rotation and the uh, the lower rotation here. And just to see where I got those values from, so this is the minus 10. This is just going to let us kind of go in line with it and just below, but not too much below the floor. 
and the minus 80 was just 10 units more than what we'd set the camera to be. So the camera, remember when we put it in, I put this at uh, minus 70 on the rotation. So this just gives you a little bit of freedom to rotate up a bit more when you're in. But again, it's not going to let you roll over yourself. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the functionality. And uh, if we wanted to play about with things now, we can come in and uh, we can duplicate the floor. I just alt clicked and dragged the floor to create another one. If we click on the first floor, then we'll zoom into this one. If we click on the other one, of course, we're going to zoom over to that one. And like I mentioned, we quite simply roll around the objects that we have selected. So it's nice and tidy and you've got a nice solid feeling rotation that you can't really get lost and start looking off into the sky without wanting to. And of course, as we've done previously, if we go to the camera actor, we've got the focused actor set to none at the moment. So we can now choose any any actor in the scene and we can use fl floor two this time. So again, like we've seen previously, if we press play, wait a second, then this is going to zoom into the second floor. And then we've got full control to move between them. So pretty standard stuff, but hopefully this is going to be, like I said, a nice simple start to a strategy or RTS style camera. And you can start building upon this and refining it to the specific game mechanics that you have. I do have one more video planned for this series, which just be a final tidy up of the project. And also I wanted to show how we can drop the move to focused actor custom event into a function so that we can focus more on getting everything out of the event graph into their own functions and also if people are interested to see how we can use alternatives to latent functions inside of the functions that we make i figured this would be quite an interesting way to look at things like curves and how to use them in lerping functions so i'll leave this one here for today as always if you've enjoyed the video or find them useful please do leave a like and share the video around that always helps and of course don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on this channel and as ever thanks for watching and i'll see you next time